All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Jeff Wolfer. I'm the Vice President of Business Development for Argon. And that means all the product development, zirconia development, all that kind of stuff is uh, my responsibility at Argon. And I got an amazing team. Some of you guys have probably seen Paul Cascone, uh, who's really the inventor of the materials behind all of our zirconia products. So I don't know if you guys have seen some of his lectures, uh, but an amazing team that helped develop this material. Um, so I'm really excited to introduce Jack Moreno. Uh, I've actually been working with Jack for, man, I'm not sure how many years now. We're going to date ourselves. Yeah, I know. We probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, but uh, like right when digital really started kicking off, when Argon really got into the digital, uh, I got some calls from Jack. He was trying to do some crazy stuff that no one's ever done before. Uh, for some very scary dentists who you don't want to mess <laughs> stuff up for. So, um, and we did some really cool stuff with SLM and, and some really cool digital back in the day. Um, if you don't know much about Jack, uh, which I, I think most people do, uh, Jack has been doing some amazing prosthodontic work and amazing zirconia work uh, for many, many years for pretty much everybody who's anybody in the dental industry. Um, and he's just done some amazing stuff with our material and uh, he showed me some cases not too long ago. I'm like, this is, how do you, how do, you do this stuff? What, how did you get here? And he's like, Jeff, with your material, anybody can do this, you know? And that's what, you know, kind of the, he helped us come up with the Zirconia now, you're the next master. He's like, look, this is something that everybody can do with your material. So um, I think you're really gonna love what he does. Um, for any of you guys who have technicians back at the lab or anybody who wants to um, you know, see some of this lecture. Right now it's streaming on Facebook Live and you can go to the Argon Corporate Facebook page uh, and I believe you can see it stream live right now and it'll also it'll be something that we post on our website and that you guys can see and, and refer to and we'll probably do a nice production on the video for all that kind of stuff. So um, without further ado, Jack Moreno, uh, probably one of the most amazing technicians that I've ever had the pleasure to work with and I've gotten a chance to work with a lot over the years. So. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Jeff, for that amazing introduction. Uh, there'll have to be a little something special for you in an envelope later. Good morning, everybody. And look at and Conrad Rensberg. No Conrad, right? So the dynamic duo, what is going on? So Jeff and Michael took us out to dinner last night. Conrad cannot hold his liquor. He had way too much to drink. The last time I seen him, he was with a homeless guy singing folk songs and said, just leave him here, right? <laughs> we get to actually joke on Conrad today at his expense. It's one of those things when you don't show up, right? Don't be the one that doesn't show up to the room because everybody's going to get to make jokes on you. Uh, Conrad, actually, he was lecturing yesterday in Tallahassee, Florida. His flight was canceled. He had a red-eye flight. One shot to get here first thing in the morning it was canceled. So... I am rolling solo. Hopefully I do a good job. I think I can. I'm doing my slides and I'm doing Conrad's. So let's see how I do and hopefully I don't mess it up too much. Like Jeff said, this is Zirconia now. We're going to talk about everything that's been going on in the industry, Zirconia, uh, restorations, everything that advances in technology, kind of where we're at and what can be done. We're going to talk about the history of zirconia. We're going to talk about you know, current modern fabrication techniques and everything that I do that you can do. And I tell everybody all the time, for all the courses I do and all the lectures, if, I, if you come to a course with me on a Friday, right, you got to be able to go back and do it on a Monday. Because then otherwise I didn't do my job. And unfortunately in the industry, I'm a very humble person. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I mean that. I have zero ego. I don't believe in them. I don't believe in the superstar technician ego things, right? I don't want to be famous. Usually those are just trophy shows. They show you up on the screen. You can't really reproduce any of those results, right? Not in the real world. So today we're going to talk about what we can actually do. You guys could see it today. You can go back on Monday and do it, right? And Conrad's not here, but Conrad and Dries are, are the owners of Absolute Dental Laboratory. And Absolute right now is celebrating 25 years in business in North Carolina. They have four locations, right? And so they've, they've been partners for that 25 years. And what they've really built is pretty incredible. I teamed up with them about a year ago now, and we've been at it ever since. Um, and, and when I got there, it was kind of interesting because 
they were really, really big into, this is cobalt chrome frames, right? Metal ceramic. It, very early on in my career, I was lucky and, and blessed enough to start doing full arch, full mouth rehabs, right? I did a lot with Carl Misch back then. Um, and, and, you know, from there on got really heavy onto the prosthodontic side of the house, working with a lot of the major universities. And full arch metal ceramics was just an absolute bear. You can see that I stopped doing them about eight, maybe nine years ago. I still have portions of my hair left. I turned 40 this year. I'm going through the change. I'm trying to deal with it. It's not going well. <laughs> Jeff's got great hair, right? Michael's got great hair. I'm missing big chunks. Conrad has no hair, right? And that's because he's so committed to doing cobalt chrome or metal ceramics, right? And, and, and the problem with it is, you know, you got exceptional results. To get there, you absolutely had to kill yourself. I mean, you really, really did. Just to get one of these things to cast was, was a big deal. Um, and you would run into all types of problems. So layering the ceramic, getting to the end, maybe you blew a bubble, maybe you shot a crack. And here's the problem. Eventually, right, guaranteed at some point, it's not if, it's when, they're gonna fracture. They just do, right? I used to show slides, I don't have them here, uh, but I used to show slides of this beautiful, incredible metal ceramic work, and then six months later, just pieces, right? Screw retained. It was really, really tragic. This is Yansu Kim, and Yansu works at the laboratory. We're all a team. I developed the art team. It's the advanced restorative team at uh, Absolute. Conrad is not a member. He's still very, very upset about that. He's trying hard to be on the team. I haven't let him on yet because this is some of Conrad's work right here, zirconia work. Yee, ouch, right? <laughs> That's why he's not on the art team, right? You cannot put that in the mouth. What is that? I don't even know what that is. And here's some more of Conrad's work. It keeps getting better and better as the slides go. You can see he's progressing as a, as a technician. Oh, boy. And here's another one. Ooh, I don't even know what that is. So, and, and I'm showing some of you guys. I've, I've been collecting these through the years. These are zirconia arches, right? And I'm going to do a calendar. I'm going to have one for each month like this right here. I think this beauty is going to be February, right? We'll go ahead and put that up because I want to show you guys what not to do. So I'm going to put this and burn this into your memories now so it's in your head so when we get to what to do, you can see the difference, right? Because we're technicians. We kind of work that way, all right? And we're talking about, if we're looking at expectations, technician, clinician, and patient, what we do is truly remarkable. To this day, right, and, I, and I've, I've probably been technicianing for 20 years now, um, it amazes me every time we do something and put it in the mouth and it goes. It's just incredible. Think about all the variables, right? Think about all the things working against us. Think about the technician, the clinician, and the patient, all with different expectations, right? Trying to come together and put something together and then it looks real and it's in the mouth. It's a very, very amazing. A technician, they want to know how many layers of porcelain they could add to one crown, how, how predictable is the fabrication method, so on and so forth. But then when you look at the bottom, how much will it cost to produce and what can I sell it for? A lot of what we're going to talk about today is going to cover everybody, from the laboratory owners to the laboratory managers to the technicians. And everything we're going to do today, we're going to talk heavily about the business side of Zirconia and the business side of Dental Lab. One of the best lectures I ever gave was all about the business of laboratory, right? And, and we'll talk a little bit about that. The clinician, he's going to come in, he's like, will a value chroma match margins, the fit? And then he's going to get down to the bottom. How much will it cost and how long will it take to deliver, right? The patient, will it look and feel like a tooth? Much more simpler, right? Look at the technician line and then look at the patient line. How much will it cost and how long will it take, okay? And we can kind of see that going up, but we see the trend between the three individuals. And that brings us to when we're looking at what we're doing. I've said this for a long time. I don't do the whole, I'm an artiste thing, right? Because I don't believe I'm an artist. I've always told everybody I'm a craftsman. I got that from my dad. My dad was a home builder, right? And he would tie on the bandana and have the, the tool belt and he was an architect and he would tell you, I'm, I'm the best craftsman you've ever seen. And he was a craftsman. And that's kind of what we do in dental technology. There's an art element, right? But you won't see me bounce around and, you know, 
tell you how I'm this artist and, and you know, I do drink espresso. I uh, had way too many this morning, but I won't sit there with my pinky like this and, you know, tell you, you know, I'm an artist. I'm a craftsman, right? And Conrad, when I told him that in Dries, they said, no, 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 you're an artist. I said, no, I'm a craftsman. So Conrad went and he looked it up. The definition, let me get it right here, a worker who practices a trade or handicraft, an expert in the practical application of a science, a person skilled in the technique of an art or a craft. That's basically what we do as technicians, right? And then you look up the artist, and it's one who professes and practices an imaginative art, right? <laughs> what we do is not imaginative. It's, it's a real thing, right? There, there is a, a very real thing that we're trying to duplicate or create, something that already exists, where an artist just comes up with it and, and goes. If you look, here's the Mona Lisa. This was very, very cool. Uh, in the Mona Lisa is the golden ratio, right? It was discovered, kind of goes like that. Now also, where have we seen that before? We've seen the golden proportions, right? So it's, it's, it's very, very fascinating. When you're talking about the masters, something interesting about them, and I, I've seen this, it was pointed out to me many years ago, is they never painted teeth. Right? Because teeth are really that hard. Okay? That's what we do. And if you look at technology now, it really bridges the gap between craftsman, technician, and artist. Right? So there is an art element, but we are craftsmen. And I, I truly, truly believe that. When I got to the laboratory, here's some of the business side of it. Right? And I'm going to start roaming around because it's my little bit of my ADD and, and some squirrel in me that's got to keep me moving. I get kind of antsy. Right? But when we start looking at this, I really want to point out this right here is going to be metal ceramics, okay? I wonder if I could get in the middle without blocking the screen. I can, as long as I stand over here. So metal ceramics, right? 16 hours labor, 61% gross margin. I would actually argue that that number is going to be a lot less, right? 16 hours on a full arch metal ceramic case, okay? That's if nothing goes wrong. Right? As we know how many times when you're glazing it, nothing's gone wrong the whole time and you're glazing it, comes out of glaze, there's a bubble, there's a huge crack. So that 16 hours now becomes 20 hours. Right? What we can do with zirconia, we're looking at zirconia from a business standpoint, from a laboratory manager standpoint, from a technician standpoint. It means something different to each one of those individuals. But we're able to achieve things today that we've never been able to achieve before in the laboratory. Right here, labor time, seven hours. Gross margins, 74%. Now there too, I would argue that that's actually higher. When you look at what they calculated, and, and we're more than happy to share our numbers with you guys, they have everything factored into that, okay? Even login, $1.98. Those are definitely not California prices. That's gotta be North Carolina prices, right? So right here, uh, there's, and there's no tax on there either. Um, but right there, I mean, login, they've calculated everything. That's taking a case from a clinician with an abutment level impression from front to back, the costing, all right? And then we see seven hours. Now, seven hours doesn't mean one arch. What it means is two, right? Because there, well, we're going to talk about firing zirconia. And when you're firing it in the porcelain oven, you're rotating one out and you're rotating one out, right? One of the problems we have as an industry, and we all suffer this, again, the three individuals combined, whether you're the laboratory owner, the laboratory manager, or the technician, is staffing, right? Finding more technicians. I'm always looking for technicians. There's a lot of you probably in this room right now doing the same thing. You're hiring, right? What we're able to do utilizing a lot of this is we don't need as many technicians, but it's also it's scalable and it's teachable, right? Before to, to, to master your craft as a ceramist took many, 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 many years. And then we start talking about full arch and many people are afraid of them the first time they see them, right? What we're able to do now is go ahead and bring that to individuals much more quicker and get them able to produce those results much quicker. 
For example, that seven hours, and, and I don't recommend this, and I hate myself in the morning when I do it, but that seven hours, we just had end of month, right? So a lot of you probably have end of month, and we all do the same thing, right? We got to finish the cases and billing, and we have targets and budgets and numbers and all of that stuff, right? I don't make any apologies for ever talking about the money side of it. I don't make any apologies for making money, right? That's the whole artist thing where, oh, we can't talk about money because it's a bad word right at the end of the day we all have to eat so for me on end of month I did four arches four now take that and let's say five thousand dollars an arch it was twenty thousand dollars I build out on my team I did right and it's not that hard to do guys it really really isn't you got it broken down into really about three hours labor time on the ceramic side for the zirconia full arches there's the old absolute and the new absolute. Since we've gone to the new absolute, Conrad's actually got a little bit of hair coming through. I see some fuzz up there. <laughs> He's pretty excited about it. The history of zirconia. Zirconia has had major advancements and in great due part to the, the team over at Argon. Um, if we look at it when we first had zirconia, zirconia first came out, we were doing all the same thing, right? We had just white zirconia and we were doing external staining right and it was it was it was ugly i mean zirconia when zirconia first came on the stage before we even got to full contour it was so damn ugly that the master ceramists were giving courses like say here on how to layer a zirconia coping so it wouldn't be ugly because the ugliness of that millimeter thick coping would bleed through the layered ceramics and just kill the layered ceramics, right? That's how bad the stuff was. Then we decided, I got a great idea, let's go to full contour with it. And we we're external staining it. And that was incredibly ugly, especially if you had like a C4, an A4, right? I mean, how many times were you trying to stain that thing and put it in the oven? Then we went to internal staining or pre-center stain. This is an industry was disastrous, okay? It was an absolute nightmare. I gave lecture after lecture, courses after courses on infiltrating uh, uh, green stage zirconia, right? And then usually, as soon as I would give a course and teach everybody how to do it, I would get all the phone calls the next week in panic because they were getting crazy results. If you wanted to see how consistent you were as a technician, sit down and stain 30 or 40 green stage zirconias and center them, right? Because the results would just be wild. They'd be all over the place. You'd have four different A2s, right? Could even be in the same, in the same arch. Could be a, a posterior quadrant, right? It was really, really tough. Then we went to micro layering. There was all kinds of techniques. I came up with a technique. Other people came up with a technique. As you could see here, I was protecting the buckle cusp from areas of function and that came due to my background in the implant world right because we didn't want layered ceramic in any areas of function with implants because you were going to lose it and I was telling technicians this all the time because a lot of times what I would see was they would chop that off right and on an anterior they would chop it off and on an implant case there's a pretty good chance you're going to lose that ceramic so that's what we used to do and here's some of those cutback techniques. You can see that I, I, I maintain the incisal edge. I maintain the contacts. And the reason why is because this was all valuable information for me. There's a terrible inefficiency in the laboratory when we have the computing power to design full contour and then chop it all away in the design, put it back out to the floor, and then build it all back up again, right? So what's that valuable information? Incisal edge position, um, we have contacts, we have occlusion, we have tooth form and contour, and then we would wipe it all out and we would build it all back up. Didn't make sense to me, right? Now we're starting it closer to talking about full contour zirconia. And you can see here too, I mean, these are gonna go through the three. First, it was just, you know, no cutback, incisal third cutback, full cutback, a left incisal edge position, right? Now we're getting a little bit more to full contour. This is where it gets exciting. I was doing a, a lecture years and years and years ago. It used to be a room like this and I'd ask everybody, it was funny back then, who has a scanner in the laboratory? And maybe only like six or seven people would raise their hand. Now, I mean, I don't even ask the question, but I put this slide up and there was a guy in the, in the audience, this is super old, he jumped up and he's like, that didn't come out of a mill, 
And I said, no, of course it didn't, right? The mill, and this is something to remember as, as we're going through some of these cases, will get you like 90% there. Gives you everything you need when it comes to full contour. What you do after that, that little percentage, that small artistic element that will apply is your own if you choose, right? If you choose. So that's kind of what, what can be done. When we're looking at it, it used to be full contour design, and then of course it would drive me nuts. We would cut it back because at that point the zirconia was so ugly. But I came up with all types of workarounds and techniques to really try to get the aesthetics here. You can see my cutback with my incisal edge. I've maintained it, but I've done like an empress aesthetic kind of with the, the stains or the zir liners back on there. And then I would layer porcelain on the facial. This is where we're at today. Now, this case is very interesting. I did this case with the University of Iowa, Dr. Chris Barwich uh, in prosthodontics up there. And this case would normally make a technician shudder. And here's the reason why. We have a custom abutment, it's gonna be in number eight. And we have, look at that big metal core in number nine. Yee, that is, that is pretty tough. And we're going with zirconia now. Here's one of the issues with zirconia now. Zirconia now as a material is so aesthetic, right? that something like this becomes an issue. Look at the teeth, very, very, very beautiful teeth, gorgeous translucencies, right? But the problem we're gonna have in this case is it's not on dentition. We're gonna have a big custom abutment, we're gonna have that big metal core, right? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go with zirconia, right? And there's actually, I don't know, has, has anybody used the zirconia opaquer? Anybody? All right, you have, sir. Anybody else? I see one more. I see a couple more, right? On this case, I use the zirconia opaquer, right? Because I got to block those out. When I first heard about it, pre-center opaquer, somebody told me about it. I said, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Why would I opaque zirconia, right? And now, I opaque zirconia all the time. This is the reason. So here's our result. And this is monolithic full contour zirconia. If we're able to achieve this today, right, we've made some incredible, incredible advancements. All right. Um, think about this is, is you've eliminated the redundancy in the laboratory to where now you can take that case, you could design it in full contour, it could come out of the mill in full contour, you could apply some green stage finishing, which would be my surface texture and anatomy. You're gonna center it, it's gonna come out, you're gonna verify everything. As ceramists, our role has kind of changed, right? And, and a lot of ceramists, it bothers them. Me, it doesn't bother me. Ceramists now are verifiers, right? We verify contacts, we verify margins, we verify occlusion, we verify incisal size ledge, in surface texture and anatomy and things like that. That doesn't bother me. When it came to ceramics and layering ceramics, right? I could layer ceramics with the best of them. I hated layering ceramics, right? It was the worst thing. As you can see, I'm not wired to sit there and layer ceramics. So about halfway through an arch, I would start to freak out and my leg would start tapping and shaking, right? And, and so I would only layer ceramics to get to the end, right? What was the end? The end is this artistry, right? I wanna put the surface texture, I wanna put the anatomy, okay? And that's where we're able to go with it today. How do I do it? So let me actually, because I'm going to see this with you guys. These, I don't, so if you came to the lab today and you sat down at my bench, you'd be expecting to see all this stuff, right? I don't have stuff. I use very little, but each thing does a lot. Everything that you see up here on the screen is the same, you know, instruments that I use or burrs or carbides that I use or diamonds to cut PMMA, to cut green stage zirconia to cut Emacs, right? To cut layered ceramic on the rare instance there's layered ceramic, okay? I still do own a porcelain brush. It's in a drawer, right? <laughs> if we were there, you'd have to actually ask me to look for it. Um, and, uh, and, and carbide, and I'll, I'll cut everything with just that. Anything in the lab that I am fabricating is made with those instruments right there. Now, of course, wow polishing paste, you guys already probably know about this. When you got to polish, this is what I use. Works great on layered ceramics too. Use the short, this is number nine, short stiff, right? 
If you use the longer ones, they're fine, but they're gonna shred, and then you're gonna get all the hairs in your shirt. It's gonna feel like you got a fresh haircut. It drives me nuts, right? So use the shorts, they're gonna hold on for you. And then we're gonna have our rubber wheels, just normal Brassler dialites. We're gonna have this guy. Maybe some of you have used it, maybe some of you haven't, but where you've removed the sprues, this is just a Scotch Bright. You can go over that and it smooths it up really, really nice, very, very quick. So you don't have, you know, I don't want to really, after center, I don't want to touch it. I just want to check it, right? So I don't want to go back and have to grind anything off. So I'll use that. And diamonds. I stopped buying diamonds years ago. Thank you to Renford. Uh, this thing truly is brilliant. And I use this again for contouring, for PMMA, for ceramics, for layered ceramics. I'll cut titanium with it. I'll cut Emacs blue blocks off. I use them literally for everything. Make sure you get the ones that say brilliant, right? Make sure because there's, there's two different ones. You want these with the white lettering. Firing program. So this is an example of a firing program. And firing zirconia is very, very important, especially the large zirconia cases, right? When everybody started doing these full arches, they would open up in the oven and they would all be in pieces and everybody would be kind of freaking out, right? Trying to figure out what is going on. Zirconia, we first treated it really, really closely to a metal, but it is not a metal, right? So what it does is it takes an enormous, and the more zirconia you have and the greater mass you have, the kind, zirconia is a common sense material. If you treat it with respect, it will respect you. The second you don't respect that material, it will prove to be catastrophic failure, right? So if we look here, this is an example. What you wanna do with zirconia is it takes a massive amount of energy to raise up the, get it to temperature, right? And then once it's the temperature, so we're right here, so we're gonna go real slow, and we're gonna take our time bringing it up. Once we're there, it does not wanna let it go, right? So now, and I see everybody, they have a molar, or they have a premolar or something in the production laboratory, and they just let it roll, and, and okay, that's fine, I'm not gonna argue, but for your full arch stuff, right? For your big bridge stuff, this is very, very, very important, please guys. 450. So this is on a this is on an Ivoclar, it's on a clamshell. My long-term cool is at 450. Okay. My average program I run on zirconia is gonna be about 40 minutes. And then even when it opens at 40 minutes, I still can't touch it, right? Because it's still so hot. So even after it opens up at 450, opens up, I'll take it out, I'll set it on the side, you close the close the muffle. And it's still sitting there for another 15 minutes. So keep that in mind that the firing cycles on these, from the moment you put them in to the time you can actually pick it up back off the tray, is about an hour, okay? It's about an hour. But don't, don't push your zirconia past the limits, right? I've seen by following some of these rules I'll talk to you guys about today, I've seen very few catastrophic failures when it comes to full arch zirconia. I hear, you know, a lot of times I'll hear is from a clinician side, oh, they break. No, they don't. If they're breaking on you, something is going wrong, right? And usually within six different things I could sort out and kind of figure out it was either done on the clinical side that it was catastrophic failure or it was done on the technical side, right? You can compromise your zirconia and not even know it before it even left the laboratory, right? And then you could find out one month, six months, one year down the road. On the clinical side, one of the biggest culprits is not verifying the master cast, right? You got to hold these guys' feet to the fire. If they don't verify that cast and I don't verify it with them and can prove that that's been verified, I will not make them an arch because I'm not going to remake it, right? I had a good friend of mine, he's a prosthodontist, and he sent in a case. Usually prosthodontists, you'll get all of this preliminary work worked up. So I'll get a case mounted with setups that have been in the mouth, occlusions done, the tooth arrangement, everything is done. I'm just basically designing within that. Also, verified master casts, right? And I asked him, are the casts verified? Yes, they are. Okay, are you sure? Yes, swear to you, right? There was a most, a really far-flung most distal implant, and he was going to final torque on that most distal implant, and he said, it sounded like a gunshot. 
when the zirconia gave and broke loose. He said he jumped in the air, the patient jumped in the air, because this just happened in her mouth, right? And it was unverified Mastercast. I did charge him for the remake, full price by the way, and he knew that one was coming, but you got to. He then admitted to me, no, I didn't verify it. It's very, very important. Interestingly enough, and, and, and we're not going to go really deep into cementing today, but pay attention to cementing and bonding your cylinders too. Because in this case, this was multi-link that I used the cement and I always used to cement my tie bases. And you would assume the cement would give before the zirconia. It was the opposite way around. The cement bond maintained and the zirconia snapped. Right, and this was no zirconia. This was no small zirconia. Okay, this was pretty serious. We're gonna look at a case, and I got you are the next master on here, and you guys will kind of figure out why. Um, this poor young gal's got all kinds of things going on. That is really, really, really nasty. Um, it's not meth mouth. It's actually Mountain Dew mouth. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's just as bad, right? Does it matter? She, she was a cleft before, she had multiple kind of surgeries to correct it. Uh, loved her cigarettes, loved her Mountain Dew, there it is, half pack cigarettes, and sipping Mountain Dew, right? Sipping means she's probably drinking gallons of the stuff. Mountain Dew of all things is so gross to put into your body, right? <laughs> so here we go. This is where she's at. Now, Yansu, Yansu Kim at the laboratory was asked to go ahead and do this case because they were gonna they were gonna publish it, right? And so he did those posterior quadrants. They're very beautiful, they're very nice. Thank you, Yansu. You did a fantastic job. Now we've got to finish the upper, right? So we're gonna go ahead and, and prepare the teeth. We're gonna go ahead and do the temps. She's gonna come in and We'll set her up with diagnostic and we're going to get in a little bit, we're going to get into bringing photo images into 3Shape and designing within the photo. I don't know if a lot of you are doing that or not, but it's really, really helpful. I had a case only like two months ago I designed, it was a, a full upper for a friend of mine and it looked perfect. When I put it in her mouth on the screen in the photo itself, right, oh, it was all types of sideways, okay? So if I didn't actually do that, I would have been way, way off and I was able to correct it. So we're gonna go ahead and get her fixed up and she is going to be, my clicker works, here we go. We're gonna do her with zirconia. So we're gonna come in, there's our design with team view with the doctor, right? Kind of got a lot of that going on, making sure he likes everything. Kind of, there's the design in her head. That's kind of that diagnostic tool that's really helpful. And when we, when we get to the final case, uh, the zirconia, we got a really, really outstanding result, right? And so Conrad's looking at it. He's loving it. He's really excited. Yansu knocked it out of the park. If you could look where she came from and where she's at now, and again, that's monolithic zirconia that we used for her, okay? It is just awesome. Really, really beautiful case. Really, really nice case. An incredible transformation. So he's going on and, and he's setting these, uh, these pictures up and he calls Yansu over to his office and he says, Yansu, I got to let you know. He's showing him the photos, right? He's going through all the photos and showing them. He's like, I got to let you know. Uh, this, this case you did is absolutely stunning. Look at the difference. Right? Look at the eyes. Did, did, can you, did you guys notice the first time that she had green eyes? Right? You can now. And <laughs> I think the green from the teeth was kind of absorbing the green from the eyes, right? But she is all fixed up and she is hot and sexy now. And it was what Conrad thought was all in part to Yansu's Kim's brilliant ceramics. Okay? This is the important part. And Yansu looks at Conrad, he's like, I love the case, but I didn't do the case. And Conrad said, what do you mean you didn't do the case? Yansu's like, I've never seen it come back. This is the first time I'm seeing it. He's like, and it's done. I didn't see it come back in the lab. Nobody brought it to me. He's like, I did not make that case. So Conrad's like, well, who did? So he goes, looks it up and looks and finds out that Jimmy Lou made the case, right? And there's Jimmy right there in action. 
Okay, now why this is important, what we're talking about, when we're talking about the business side of it and scaling it, and, and for, for technicians, let me say this, it's a quality of life issue, right? Working in full contour, working with zirconia, right? Because you're able to kind of capture some more of your life back. I used to throw up a bunch of vacation slides of me bouncing all over the place, you know, having a drink in Spain, eating, you know, ham on and stuff like that. Because that's what you can do because you have more time. From a business laboratory management standpoint, Jimmy was your, your excellent, you know, 15, 20 year ceramist with, uh, but he was a full contour posterior ceramist, right? But he just did a case like that. That was so good that Conrad thought that it was Yan Su. Conrad's like, if you could teach this to Jimmy and make him one of our top ceramists like that, we could publish this case. You, they're, I'm, I'm sold. It is incredible. And Jimmy did do that case, right? And there it is again. Jimmy Liu, right? Not Yan Su. So predictable full arch. A lot of the tools we have to our advantage today in the laboratory, full arches used to be, they were tough, right? Especially the metal ceramics ones. And I would do a full mouth case, metal ceramic arches. I would be maybe 25 millimeters of vertical, right? And then you'd get to the point to where you finally got frames and you would put these little acrylic bite blocks on them and wax up the anterior teeth on the frame and send it out and try it in and all that. All that's gone, right? It's completely gone. We don't need any of that anymore. And what Dries does, this is Conrad's business partner, he'll do a lot of the diagnostic design services with the doctors. Again, utilizing what we have, the power, the computing power we have within 3Shape. All right, so Dries will go ahead and bring it up. He'll bring the patient photos into the case. As you can see, she's got a central smack dab in the middle of her face. She was in a terrible accident. They actually did this case. It's, it's a beautiful story. It was published, if you read it. Um, it's, it's a tearjerker. Warning you guys now, you'll be crying by the end. Uh, but the guys did this case for Esther free of charge, uh, pro bono. She found a wedding ring in a parking lot and returned it instead of keeping it. And the guys seen that kind of on TV and noticed she was kind of hiding her smile and come to find out that's why. And they went ahead and, re and restored her um, on the house to really kind of change her life. And this is that case going through kind of the digital design step, right? Everything is, is predetermined digitally now. We have that at our disposal. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, right? Especially when we get to these larger cases, when you guys are going to see, I'm going to do a lot of Conrad slides. Ooh, hope I don't mess up. All right, you guys be the judge. Let me know if I do. Um, well, we're going to talk about the surgical side of it before we even get to the full arch zirconia. It's really, really cool stuff. And the predictability of it on the surgical side, right? All right, so let's talk about that as we're getting into this. There's kind of where we're at, and, and you know, here's going to be kind of our diagnostic. Now we're going to, there's the bar. So we're going to use a latch system on a lot of these surgeries, and that's, everything is done digitally. And when you guys see what we can do now, it's truly, truly remarkable. So no further ado, I have Conrad here in spirit, right? So I'm going to bring him up. Now, Absolute Dental Labs Navigation Guided Surgery Solutions operates under license from different surgical companies. We utilize these different surgeries based on our surgeon's preferences. Most of these systems utilize a base or buckle bone guide as the basis for the surgery. After we've laid the buckle flat, we simply position the tooth aligner and latch that in place. After the base guide is positioned, we use that line for our bone reduction. After our bone is reduced, we slide our osteotomy guide in place and do fully guided surgery. Our systems are not dependent on one specific implant, but can utilize any implant system with a fully guided kit. After our osteotomies are drilled, our implants are placed through the guide and then position temporary abutments in place. After our temporary abutments are in place, we slide our conversion denture into the latches and latch that in position. Once the latches are confirmed, we loot our temporary abutments, remove our conversion denture, and while the surgeon is suturing up, we simply cut the latches, reposition your conversion denture, and our patient goes home. All right, so there's, there's, there's a little bit of Conrad for you. And he does, I think he missed his calling. 
he should have kind of done this sexy kind of voiceover guy thing, right? <laughs> Very soothing, uh, you know, with the accents he's got going on. I don't have that, but it sounds really good. This is what it's gonna look like live, right? And there's a couple different ways that these guides go. Uh, of course, Toothborn is going to be the most accurate. Now, this isn't necessarily Toothborn, right? But we're going to use the teeth that are existing to actually go ahead and verify everything. Now, in those anterior teeth that have been extracted, those were undercut, right? So they'll go ahead and remove those, but all the other teeth will remain. And they're going to go ahead and lay the flap, and then they're going to position the guide. Okay, so they've been flapped, it's been brought down. The guide is being placed in position right now. And then this is gonna be kind of the verification, right? So they're gonna put that over the top, make sure that everything is in place. The, the bottom guide is where it's supposed to be, the base guide. And then they're gonna go ahead and either use fixation screws or fixation pins. And the other things are the latch pins that are gonna hold the whole entire system together. Once that base guide is in place, it does not move throughout the entirety of the surgery. Everything is gonna be based off of that base guide. Now, all of this has been planned digitally, okay? And so it's gonna be very, very accurate. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how accurate. We're gonna come back through. Now we're gonna do, we got the upper, we got the lower. What's most important is once these guides are in place, we're gonna see that our vertical right there the, the most incredible thing to me when I first seen this as a full arch, full mouth guy is vertical and how they're maintaining it. And by doing this, you can see that our vertical is exactly the same from the model to actually in the mouth. That is incredible, guys. This is something that we've never seen before in, in dentistry, especially in the clinical surgical side, right? Now we're going to get right down to the meat. So there's the rest of the extractions. We're gonna go ahead and that bone is gonna be taken off and removed along the guide, okay? And there's all different types of ways that they remove the bone. Those are some snippers. They can use a chisel. Um, can you imagine what that sounds like? Ooh, wow, how awful is that? It's a good thing I got, hit you guys up before lunch, not after lunch. Ooh, <laughs> look at that. And Conrad always jokes, he says, the patients ask if this is gonna hurt. He's like, not me, right? <laughs> that is pretty, pretty nasty. I, I, I show my daughters that picture and chase them around the house with it and tell them that's what's gonna happen to them if they don't brush, right? They're probably watching on Facebook Live right now. Uh, so there you go, make sure you brush, girls. Uh, and, and that section that's been removed, you can see we can go right back to the casts and it matches exactly, right? It matches exactly. Now we're gonna come back and once our bone is removed, there's some more bone removal. We're gonna get ready to, again, I've still maintained our vertical we're gonna get ready to go ahead and put our provisional latch in now because we're gonna go ahead and actually check and verify our occlusion. And I'm gonna tell you why. This was actually quite fascinating. I've recently learned this myself. And during the surgery, okay, the, what'll happen is, so they put this in, there's no implants placed yet. They've put the latch in. You could see the bite is perfect, right? They do it now to verify because during the rest of the surgery, the patient will actually slip out, okay? And when they wake up and they come to, they go to close and it's all off because they've actually unhinged, right? Because they've been resting like that for so long. By the next day, they've popped back in place. It's very, very fascinating. So when they come out of the chair, they don't adjust occlusion. They send them home like that because they know right there what we're seeing on the screen. That's where the occlusion is right? And they're going to go ahead and place their implants. That's the implant guide that now latches into the base guides, right? And they'll go ahead, and this is basically what Conor was showing in the animation, but a live surgery, okay? And there's going to be a marker that actually shows the hex to line up on the guide so they can make sure that everything's perfectly positioned, all right? This is an abutment guide. So when you go to place your multi-unit abutments, you want to make sure that they're positioned correctly, right? So what you can do is you put this in and actually that dot on the abutment guide lines up with the screw so that you know you have it positioned properly, right? Then you're going to come back over with your temp abutment cylinders. 
you're going to place your provisionals back into the base guide with the latches and pick them up. This is Voco, right? We're going to unscrew it. That's not actually the real patient. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nice result, right? Ah, uh, fooled you guys. So also something that we do, uh, and, and we do this a lot because we're really specializing in these restorations to make it easy for the clinician is going to be this, a transitional restoration. And, and now again, with the technology, utilizing what we have, we're able to capture this. All of this is just leading us up to getting to the zirconia, right? This is front to back, okay? What you guys are able to see. Here is Conrad again. I'm Conrad from Absolute Dental Lab. Today I'd like to share a very innovative technology helping our clinicians to restore a hybrid with true predictability and limited appointments. Because our patients mostly show up with a fixed hybrid or a fixed converted hybrid at surgery stage, we can now use that data to restore our final. We best describe an iJig as one hybrid, two appointments. By using the patient's existing transitional denture, we have a great starting point for our final prosthesis. Remove the hybrid from the mouth, place some eye flags you can get from Absolute Dental, scan the denture, replace it back in the mouth, scan the opposing, scan the bite, and send that data to us at AbsoluteDentalLab.com. A few days later, you will receive your iJig. The iJig is an exact copy of the patient's hybrid, but separated between the implants. Screw the iJig down in pieces and loot the pieces together to verify our impression. By using a little bit of composite or even temporary acrylic, you can now create an exact copy of the patient's original hybrid. Take pictures and talk to the patient about their expectations. We now flow PVS impression material into the intaglio surface, remove the eye jig, and return that back to Absolute Dental. Once we receive the eye jig back from your office, we will simply place lab analogs, pour a model, and mount the case. We will now use this captured data to fabricate a prototype. We will return a prototype to your office for final patient approval. Once we achieve patient approval, we will simply copy that into our final hybrid. This system truly allows us to restore a hybrid very predictably in as little as two appointments. Click the link for more information on this very innovative process or visit us at AbsoluteDentalLab.com and allow my team and I to show you why absolute perfection is not optional. Oh, thank you very much, Conrad. Obviously, we cannot click the, li click the link, right? Uh, but he's here in spirit with us today. Uh, that's kind of the iJig, kind of discussing a little bit of technology. Now, again, we're going to go back and see this real time, what that is. But this is a really easy way to get a lot of the preliminary work out of the way, okay? Historically, you're looking at about six appointments, and that's based off of if the setups are going good. There's usually a reset, depending on a big trend I see, is lots and lots of GPs are restoring these cases, right? I'm a prosthodontic guy, okay? I, I have always and have been, either prosthodontics or cosmetic dentistry, right? Things like that, AACD. Uh, ACP, I fly both sides of the house, so the occlusion experts, the schools of thought there. Um, now we're getting general dentists doing these, and it's really, really scary. Hopefully there's no general dentist in the room, I am sorry, <laughs> but they just don't know. They have no idea. They actually had an office, they sent, you'll get this, you'll get a full, two full arch impressions, two fixture, not even some multi-unit abutments, and they will just write on the script, Full arch zirconia A2. And then you gotta kinda let them know that they got about two months to go, right? And they're shocked. Well, the patient wants their teeth. They were expecting these in two weeks. Oh, they, you better to have a talk with them, okay? So what the iJig does is for those dentists, 
it's able to knock out that preliminary work very easily for them, okay? The surgeons love it because they're, that's their referrals. Now these cases are going back to the referring GP, right? These guys get it. I actually had one gal, she was in tears. She's like, I don't know what to do. I'm terrified of this case. I'm like, don't worry. Uh, after you get maybe three dozen of these under your belt, you'll be good to go. No, I'm just joking. But she was able to restore the case and did it successfully, right? But you gotta make sure that the more and more you guys are seeing these come in from the lab, from the GP side that you protect yourselves and that you educate them. It's very, very important because they have no idea, right? They're assuming they're gonna take an impression and they're gonna get full arch zirconia back in two weeks. Right? So, so it's our job to let them know that is not necessarily the case. And with the iJig, we can get there a little bit quicker, a little bit more accurately. Years and years and years ago, and, and all credit, and I, I do this every time because I truly believe this from the bottom of my heart, the man is brilliant and he's incredibly creative. Uh, Enrico Steger, who started all of this, right? And we all give him you know, great credit for it. Um, he was the only game in town and from there that's when I started developing or had to develop kind of something that would fit into three shape, right? Because I didn't have zircons on, okay? And that's where it all started in working with UNC. We actually got one of the biggest zirconia full arch studies out there. I think it's about 150 arches through the University of North Carolina Grad Pross program. And we came up with the two temp. Now you guys have seen it a thousand times. You'd get one ugly one, you'd get one aesthetic one. The ugly one becomes the master record, right? Tooth arrangement, midline and size alleged position, verification, bite, right? All of that information is gathered. And then the pretty one goes in the mouth. Changes could be made to the second one, right? The iJig is kind of that concept, just more advanced as far as what is our next level kind of master record, right? And that's what this is. So there's a kind of, and we're going through it kind of real time, and you, the doctor will scan it. I'm going to go a little bit quicker. Um, he'll come back through. We'll take that. Now we have the digital scan, okay? Start fabricating the iJig. If there's any changes that need to be made, diagnostic changes, they could be done at that time. You could see there's a flange on it. That flange that's on there is actually for the impression material because what we're going to do is it's now going to become our new master cast impression, all right? We'll come back through. You can see the flange. That's going to capture everything. And there's a little tray that it actually goes in. There it is. There it is sectioned. I like those shoes. And here we come back in the mouth. The conversion that they're wearing is removed, right? The eye jig is then seated. Now you could either use the tray to load it or you could load the pieces individually depending on the clinician. Some find it easier to put the pieces in one at a time, just kind of position them, right? They're then gonna come back over and they're going to loot. And once everything's screwed in place, they're gonna loot everything together, right? That's gonna be now our verified master cast, master impression, right? There's looting them together, just like you would a verification jig, but this is a verification jig with teeth, okay? Now, once you get it all pieced together, check occlusion. You could adjust anything at that point. You can make any changes. And you're going to inject your impression material. It's gonna be on that intaglio side. That's what that big wing is for. You're gonna put it through the holes, the light body. We're gonna capture that new tissue side, right? You're gonna put their conversion back in their mouth and send that to the laboratory. That's what you guys are gonna get, okay? When you get that, we're gonna pour that up. That's our, new, that's our new master impression, right? It's also a record. As soon as it's poured up, we could go ahead and mount it, right? We have basically an initial setup. We could see everything. It is the all-inclusive master record, all right? And then we mill everything. We use Temp Aesthetic, Harvest Dentals, Temp Aesthetic. Um, I'm sure all of you know about it by this point. It's double cross link PMMA. It's super, super beautiful and super, super strong. We've been using that, or I've been using that since it was basically uh, developed when uh, Harvest Sasha released it. And you get incredible results. The thing with Temp Aesthetic is it looks like ceramics, right? I've done stuff with Temp Aesthetic that are just blow your mind and don't do the thing, no, I wanna make my temps ugly 
because then the patient will never come back. No, I make them absolutely beautiful because then the patient comes back, right? They want the finals. So you go and put everything into that. That's kind of how they come out with the mill, right? Now we're going to go ahead and again, the mill is going to get me like 90% there. I'm going to go ahead and do some contouring to them, right? There's very, very important areas I want you guys to focus on when working on these cases, and I'll explain why. There we go. This is more, this is Tempesthetic PMMA. Now we're going to take that, and we're going to turn that into zirconia. So now after all of this, we're ready to get our full contour zirconia game on, right? You guys ready? Okay, some diagnostic design. The designing is, is it, it's really fairly easy. There's not that many tips or tricks I can tell you about designing a full arch guy's kind of teeth go or teeth go. Um, obviously make it nice, obviously follow the rules, stay with what the clinician wants, what the patient wants, kind of stuff like that. Now this is interesting. Uh, previously, I used to design them just like you see on the screen. I used to grab those necks and pull them down to the ridge, right? Because I was layering Emacs Ceram as my gingival porcelain, right? I'm not layering Emacs Ceram anymore. I'm layering Mio Liquid Ceramic. So now I have to design with tissue in place, okay? Which is that what that is. Once we have our design and it's everything that I want, this is actually a, a, a fellow team member at the laboratory, Brendan. I wish I had her, her provisional video on here where she just burst out into tears with her temps. She could not believe it. She had gone three years, right, waiting for her restorations. So it was really, really emotional for her. And when you do the temps like that and you really bring it, you get this, this, this overwhelming uh, sensation by the patient. They just, you know, they're so excited they could actually kind of now visualize it, right? And it's, it's really an emotional thing. I'm not an emotional guy, but for everybody else, it's a tearjerker, right? Um, then we're going to mill it out, and here we go, out of HT+. Why HT+, because HT+, gives me everything that I need, as you're going to see, to get me to where I want to go with the strength, right? With the strength. As an industry, we went absolutely strength drunk for a while. We went crazy, like 1,500 and super ugly. And then we lost our minds and dropped it down to 500 and super brittle and breaks all the time. I don't know what we were thinking. Really, when we come back and all the pieces are coming together, where were we ending up? We're right at 1250. We're coming right in the middle. High strength, high translucency, highly aesthetic zirconia, okay? So we're going to mill it out. Now, when it comes out of mill, this is very important. We are going to apply like our small percentage of artistry. I do this in the green stage. I'm going to show you guys something very, very important when you do it. Now, if I do it, if you do it, if every one of us makes a molar in this room, it's going to look like a different molar. But I got some tips for you guys when you're doing it. I don't expect yours to look like mine, but there's a couple things that I could explain to you to make yours look better. So when we look at this, it is very important to avoid the dreaded zirconia arch curse, which is when you look at it, it is just a wall or a chunk of zirconia. Remember those very, very ugly ones we've seen earlier, right? That's burned into your mind for life. You're like, oh, you got to warn me first before you do things, right? This is not. What your eye will naturally gravitate to, and this is very, 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 very important, is these gingival embrasures, okay? When you're coming through and you're working on your zirconia in the green stage, it is of the utmost importance to create that gingival embrasure, right? At the same time, not compromising your material. Okay, so a lot of people ask me this, well, what happens if I have an implant right there? Then I don't cut it, right? I don't cut cantilevers. I do not cut if there's an implant in a screw access hole right behind that embrasure. I leave it alone. Sorry, there's nothing I can do. Believe it or not, I've never actually got a complaint back from a doctor if I've left it, right? Because you've got to understand, I'm not willing to risk or sacrifice the restoration for the sake of getting a deeper gingival embrasure. But if nothing's there, I got all the room in the world to create that natural embrasure. And when it comes down to it, that's what your eye keys into. The gingival embrasures and of course midline. 80% of my work always is midline, right? After that, really nothing else matters. If you nail the midline, you've nailed the case, okay? 
Let's take a little bit of closer look. You can see these gingival embrasures very, very deep. Very, very deep, okay? When I'm contouring green stage zirconia, I don't zip over the top with the disc, right, to give myself separation on the occlusal. And I don't come to the lingual side, right? Do that and what you're actually doing is scoring it perfectly to break, right? So there's no reason to cut it on the occlusal. There's no reason to cut it on the, the lingual side. Lingual side, palatal side, what have you. Don't cut into there. If you have a cantilever, don't separate it, right? Because if something's going to break, it's going to be the cantilever, right? So I just cut where I have to, right here. And, and as ceramists, our area of art that we apply is right here in this window, right? Right here. I didn't go through and change all the occlusal anatomy because I didn't like the design library, right? We all suffer the same problems with design libraries, but I don't change it. I leave it as is. Um, I will apply my artistry or my signature, this is Jack's signature, right here to these facials. And the same thing here, a little bit of closer look. Now with Brenda, she was an interesting case in the fact that um, she did not want bright white, she did not want perfect. It's like a technician's dream, right? Unfortunately, the scary thing is we've been getting to the point in the industry where I got friends call me up all the time, you know, in the lab industry, and they're like, this can't be true, but we are remaking this case. We milled it out of just pure zirconia, right? And they did a little staining, you know, some blues or whatever. Patient didn't like it. They want it whiter, and they want no translucency. They want no blues. They want no trans. This is like a growing thing. How, I see some smiles. Has anybody come across this lately? They've now gone as patients completely off the deep end. Remember when bleach shades first came out and we all freaked out? Oh yeah, we are lost as a society now. I'll tell you that right now because there is an 80-year-old woman right now walking around with pure zirconia in her mouth that's just been glazed, right? I see some heads going like this and you know what I'm talking about. It's scary, right? But we have to do it. We have to eat. At the end of the day, we got to pay the bills. So that's what they want. That's what we'll give them. We'll kind of cringe and look the other way. No, you won't see any photos of that that I have done because uh, I just I, I want no evidence or record that I was there, right? But again, I'm a businessman. I got to make money. So uh, that being said, they do come. And here in the green with the, with the uh, Argan system, we do have some pre center stains. Now, this I actually used, I, I believe this was A2 light that I used for her, but I added a little bit more translucency in there, right, just on the distal corners. Again, I'm relying on the material for my, for my base shade, right? I don't want to try to achieve that through liquids, although you can, but I did use the liquids a little bit to get a little bit of a translucency. And this is what we look like after center. This is what you should look like after center, and you can see our surface texture, our anatomy, our tooth form, our contours, our gingival embrasures, all capital letters, right? Very, 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 very important. And you can see we have some natural translucencies building in there. When it comes to zirconia, it is very, very, very important. Firing and sintering is the most important part. Everything is based off of that. If, if you have zirconia and you're not achieving what it is, how it is developed to achieve, you've got to go back and look at your sintering program, okay? Very, very important. Sintering can make or break you. And work with your team, work with your technical team to, to, to get your sintering program dialed in so that you get these same results. A lot of times I get guys and they're like, Jack, I'm not getting the results you get. And they show me a picture, I'm like, yee. How are you censoring that, right? So it's very, 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 very important to make sure because that is 100% the game right there, right? And we'll come back and we'll take another look. Again, we could see some of that translucency coming through, right? Now, I'm not going to layer this case. This is going to be Mio liquid ceramics and Mio structure. I'm going to start with the teeth, okay? When I do these, I got it down to a three-hour window, Okay, three hours of labor time on an arch. All right, so that's not including the, the firing time. And, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stain, the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use the liquid ceramic to color the teeth and color the gingival. 
I'm gonna fire it, it's gonna come out. I'm gonna put a quick coat of glaze on the teeth. I'm gonna fire it, it's gonna come out. And then I'm gonna apply the structure. I'm gonna fire it, it's gonna come out. One, two, three, and it's going to go get cemented and building out the door, okay? Because the structure is self-glazing, because the liquid ceramic is self-glazing, there is no other glaze at the end, right? Three firings and call it half an hour, 15 minutes application of liquid ceramic, half an hour. Application of glaze, 15 minutes. Application of structure, half an hour, and it's gone. Throw an hour of design in there. Maybe throw 15 minutes for scan. That's basically where I'm coming up with that three hour number for a full arch, okay? That's, that's a big deal, that's unheard of it, it, looking at our industry. This is kind of where I start out. I do a pink worm, okay? So I kind of come through and I will outline my gingival cuffs, all right? And that's kind of what you have here. You can see on the left side, I haven't done it yet, I'm coming through, I'm gonna go ahead and put the liquid ceramic and outline my gingival cuffs. I'm then gonna cover the entire restoration. Now you notice this is HT plus A2 light, it is HT plus A2 light from the top to the bottom. Right? I didn't do pink infiltration stain or anything like that. You don't need it, okay? This, the liquid ceramic will do a perfect job. Now, this is where I'm at, right? But I'm not done yet because the, the, the pink is good. It's not great. Let's add some character to it. And that's what we have there. I'm a long time pink ceramic guy. Pink ceramics now is so commonplace in our industry because of these type of restorations. But I started pink ceramics as a very early on technician, right? And the thing about pink ceramics where there was lots of great technicians that did them and you'll see them in the magazines and that and it was all brilliant, that's the lab. There is a fire. <laughs> I know, mine's probably buzzing in there too right now. I'm right there with you guys. No, no problem. So they go ahead and, and it was very difficult to train right? It was incredibly difficult to train and it took years to kind of master. I would spend more time on gingival ceramics than I would layering the teeth, right? Layering the teeth, I'd throw two powders in. I'm a, I've always, always stomped my feet and sworn that it's not how many powders, it's how you used them, right? Gingival ceramics, I would break out the arsenal. I'd be throwing everything in there because you had to, right? It's very, very difficult. So you could see kind of, I'm going to go back to that slide because I want to, right here, if you could see some of the nuances, right, subtle nuances that we're able to capture, that's just the liquid ceramic. I have no structure on there. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about this later with um, Mio and kind of explain to you, later today I actually have HT+, plus, right? compliments of the fine people at Argon that I'll be applying Mio to. And you can kind of actually see what I'm doing real time, right? But the majority of it comes from the liquid ceramic. So we're ceramists and sometimes we can't get out of our head. And the first time I started using it, it was a disaster, right? Because I tried to build up all the structure like it was porcelain. It was a total disaster. What it actually is, is it's primarily based off the liquid ceramics. So everything that I get from that is going to be liquid ceramics, like 80% liquid ceramics, and the rest, like the 20% structure, is only for surface texture, okay? I took this picture out of focus so that you, I could kind of concentrate on the application of the, the Mio structure here, okay? This is wet, this hasn't been fired. The nice part about working on these cases now is it's real time, right? We're all running around, you know it, I know it, right? Unlike ceramics before, you could actually set it down, I could go answer the phone, talk to the doctor for 20 minutes, come back and get it. Well again, we're talking about scaling and working with technicians, because I'm always constantly training the technicians at Absolute. They can do an arch like this, right? And set it down on the bench and wait for me to come check it. If there's something I don't like, I can move it around and change it, right? It's really, really fascinating. The combination of these materials gives us an ability and an advantage we've never had in the laboratory before. Now, same thing on the lower, right? Basically, wash, rinse, repeat. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. And then we're gonna come to the final. Is everybody ready? 
All right, that is monolithic zirconia. That is argon HT plus. All right. Now, in all my years of ceramics, if I can get that, I think I've basically, I've conquered the journey, right? Is a monolithic zirconia, all right? Super high strength, very highly, highly aesthetic, right? Very, very translucent. And that's what I've been able to achieve. By using the zirconia, you're able to check all the boxes off that are important to you as a technician at the same time implementing these modern techniques to really become efficient in the laboratory, right? You guys have almost listened to me for an hour and a half and nobody's asleep. <laughs> All right, so there we go. There's some more Argin HT Plus and there's my, there's my head stuck in there. Uh, same thing, complex comb over going on. Here we go, right? Guys, I really think at the end of the day it doesn't get much better than that, right? We could achieve results like that with a monolithic solution, game changer, right? It's huge. And you really start working on it. And, and again, a lot of what brings this to life when everybody looks at it, when you really, really take a look at it, I'm going to point out those key areas that really influence this restoration to make it look so lifelike. And it's going to be right here, these gingival embrasures, right? Now, with Brenda's case, she let me have full artistic liberty. If you go back to the laboratory and start creating this, your doctors are probably going to send it back, right? <laughs> and you all know it and I know it. So if you can have full artistic liberty, this is the limits you can push your restoration with the material, right? And this is what you can achieve. Most of the time, we're not going to be able to rotate 7 and 10 like that, right? We're not going to be able to kick out the lower two centrals and tuck the lower two laterals back. But what you can do with the material, you could push it to the max and if you do have full artistic liberty on a case, these are the results that you can achieve. There we go. And there we go. Right? That's a big deal. That is a huge deal. And in all in all those two arches together would have been, well, let, let's call it, because you can rotate them out. I'm firing the upper, I'm staining the lower, right, and spinning them around like this, right? Because remember, we got one hour firing cycles. At least you all should. You all promised me that you would, right? Very, very important. And this is why I say you guys are the next master, right? Um, for years, we've all kind of looked up to these celebrity technicians, right? Come up here and show the trophy show and the techniques that nobody else can do. The techniques that they probably don't even do, right? Shh. Is this mic on? I'm wearing four microphones. Check out my bat utility belt. It's getting pretty heavy. I'm waiting to get rid of these things. Um, so you guys are the next master and you absolutely can go back and do this, right? And that's kind of where we're at as an industry today and what we're capable of. All the way from, from tooth extractions to the final zirconia, right? It's all there. Finally, all the pieces have come together, right? You're not finding the workarounds like we used to have. And that's so, so important. As technicians, from a business standpoint, uh, I don't think it could be a better time. I honestly don't, right? And I think we're more efficient and, and, and should be making more money than we ever have before. Money's not a bad thing, right? I love money. It's fantastic. And I love doing good business and smart business and smart business choices and decisions. And this all makes sense to me. And it all makes sense in the laboratory, okay? Absolute's a, a hundred technicians strong with four, four locations. And I could easily teach this to all of them, right? You guys could do the same. So, that being said, and I'm actually slightly early, which is, which is, you guys probably won't complain about that. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. Um, it means the world to me. And thank you, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.